An Orange County woman is getting results. Yeah, Perry Armstrong called News 6 this summer. She told us her car was stolen three years ago, and the young man who took it was ordered by a judge to pay her more than $3,000 in restitution. Well, three years later, she says she only saw 20 bucks. News 6's Eric Sandoval got involved, and this week Armstrong says she had a new court hearing where the judge set up a payment plan. You stayed on them and stayed on them and stayed on them because they refused to speak to me. But after you called and whoever you talked to, right away my phone was ringing and did not stop ringing. So Perry says the judge even set up a contingency plan in case the restitution was not paid. The car belonged to her late father, so she says it had a lot of sentimental value as well. A warning before you travel with a large amount of cash. The feds just seized more than $70,000 from a traveler at Orlando International Airport. The U.S. Customs requires flyers to report when traveling with more than $10,000. According to the feds, this traveler claimed they only had $15,000 on them. They then changed that number to $51,000. Officers say travelers that do not follow the laws of customs could face charges or have their money taken. A consumer alert at 11 if you have an older iPhone. Apple is urging you to upgrade your phone soon or it's just going to stop working. So the tech giant says an iPhone 5 and older models will no longer connect to the Internet unless they have updated it. iPhone users will also no longer be able to send emails, get on the App Store or Maps. So the thing is not going to be very useful. I guess you can still make calls. The deadline to download is midnight on Saturday before you start having problems. A 10-year-old boy is now off the hook after being summoned for jury duty. Fifth grader from Connecticut got a letter in the mail saying he had to report to jury duty. His parents say they weren't sure how they even got their son's name. I always figured my kids are going to be in court someday, but I figured this is going to be a little early, you know. <laughs> All right, so the list of names uh, the judicial branch gets is from the Revenue Service, and it does not include the date of birth. That's where the boy's name came from, and that's how he got summoned. His parents sent the letter back saying he's underage. Tonight, Orange County is set to add a new air quality monitor station. So this is what it will look like. The station is meant to measure pollution levels that come from cars. This will be the fourth air quality station built in the county. The project comes from federal funding. The Environmental Protection Division says they plan to pick the station site by next year and it should start operating in 2021. <laughs> to find out where your city's air quality stands, we posted a link on ClickOrlando.com. You'll see it right under Digital Features. Chief Meteorologist Tom Strolls can tell you your city's air has been extra hot lately. Mm -hmm. Kind of thick. A little on it. the hard to breathe side. Yeah, don't it you is. Think? Yes. We're going to change that. About time. Get it done, Promise. man. <laughs> One more really hot day. I want to start out the weather story tonight with the tropics. I know it seems weird. There's nothing threatening us, really. But subtropical storm Rebecca is not here. It's way out here by the Azores. And it's a wide open mess. Things not going to blow up. It's not going to become anything big, but it's there. Subtropical storm. Here's the locator. 45 mile per hour winds right now associated with subtropical storm Rebecca. Movement now to the east at 17 miles per hour. Pressure is 987 millibars. Unless you have some sort of interest, family, property, or something in the Azores, this is never going to be your storm. It's not coming here, not going to affect our weather. All is good. It's interesting, but it's not important. The important thing is tomorrow, is another hot day. I mean hot, like 91 degrees hot. Come take a look at the trick-or-treat forecast. By 7 p.m., the sun will long since been down 83 degrees in the 7 p.m. hour. Come 8 o'clock, 81. Come 9 o'clock, still warm, 79. And the bottom line is, don't knock on my door after 9 o'clock, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, thank you. I didn't, know, you I didn't know if I was being like, you know, the Grinch who stole no. Halloween or not, but 9 o'clock, I mean, cut it out. Daytime high today was 91. The normal is 82. The record on the date is 94. We did not get a record in Orlando. We missed it by 3 degrees. We hit 92 on Monday, 92 on Wednesday, not, excuse me, 92 on Tuesday, 91 on Wednesday. So where do we stand? Well, again, that 91 in Orlando, that's not a record. But that one right there, that 90-degree reading in Sanford, that's a record. Previous record daytime high was 89. Today we went to 90. Orlando Health Camera showing 78 degrees at news time. Wind support still from the south southeast, so it's really mild everywhere. We have gone calm in Daytona Beach. Temperature in Ocala 78, Sanford 77. 
Temperatures in Palm Coast holding at 76, Northern Brevard County 78, Melbourne 81. No rain on radar. These speckles down here are nothing much. All the rain that we were looking for over here on the Gulf Coast has never really blown up. We've got not one, but two cold fronts on the way in the next four days. The first one will arrive on Friday. Look at what happens between now and then. Tomorrow, 8 o'clock in the morning. No worries, but by 4 p.m., a few little pockets of rain to maybe cool us down. But trick-or-treat time should be dry. Should be dry. Very few of you will see rain. Then late night, Thursday into Friday morning is when the front finally throws a little ribbon of moisture through here, and we stay cooler on your Friday. Your load tonight is 72. Here is tomorrow. Your forecast brought to you by Dell Air Heating and Air Conditioning. The lunchtime 86, the high is 91. Here is the week ahead. High tomorrow 91. It's going to be a near record hot Halloween. Then Friday 83, Saturday 84. But come Sunday, you got to set the clock back one hour and the high is 78. All right, Tom, thank you. Ryan's in for Jamie tonight. Magic fans, they've got a smile on their face. Yeah, Matt, it took a little bit of time. First half featured a lot of turbulence, but they turned it around in the second half. We'll show you how they fared, and we'll talk some college football. The Canes going with freshman Jaron Williams to start Saturday against the Knowles. We will be right back.